So, so last week, last week we were talking about um, separation. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna simplify this. We're not gonna go back to Genesis. We'll, we'll hit back on day three. This was day two. We'll hit day three next week. But I, I said when we finished last week that I would pick up where we left off, right? And because it's important that um, we understand the things that we must separate from, right? And the things that we... Remember when I said, we always say if I get away from people, places, and things, I'll get the toxic things out of my life. But a lot of times we are the toxicity in our own life, right? And what we sure. see in the mirror is really the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the people, places, and things. Because the reason why we go to those people, places, and things is because we like those people, places, and things. And we like the things that are in those people, uh, people places, and things. Mm -hmm. And until we deal with ourselves, people, places, and things are never the issue. It's us, mm -hmm. right? Because what happens when you deal with yourself? The moment you deal with yourself, you stop you from going to those people to those place, places and those things. Be, be, because it's never the influence of others, it's always what you like. You, you, you know what I mean? It's always what you want to consume, uh, uh, be a part of, indulge in, what you like, right? And so it's so easy to say that person, that thing, and that place is my issue. No, no, the mirror is your issue. Right? The mirror is the issue, right? And, and, and none of us are exempt from the mirror, trust me. All right? When I say you, I'm including me, we. Let's just use this word we, right? We are the issue. And so, and so because we're the issue, right? Because, 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 believe me, I just said two minutes ago, none of us are perfect. All of us are flawed, including every pastor you know, every deacon you know, every leader of every church you know, there's no one in the world that is not 100% put together, right? And so, and so what do we need to separate from? It's not those things, it's the thing that is in us. Am I, am I making sense? Right? It's the thing that is in us. And so, and so listen, Ephesians 5 is where we were, right? He says, but fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness let it not be once named among you as become of saints. Like these are the things that, that we should not be doing, right? Like like we shouldn't be, you know, hanky panky. We shouldn't be doing hanky panky outside of marriage. Woo, that's tough, ain't it, y'all? We all grown in here now, ain't we? Come on, let's let's talk about it. We all grown in here, right? And and, and you know what the problem is? It's because we tasted it. We knew it was wrong and we tasted it, and now sometimes there's no going back, right? Right? Huh? No. Thanks, babe. Right? Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. I can deal with the filthiness, right? I can deal with the foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient. Which are not convenient. Convenient means these things are not appropriate. These things are not upright. These things are not righteous, right? He says, but rather giving of thanks. This is what we should be doing, just giving God thanks. This is tough. Like, I'm married, so, so like, I'm okay. <laughs> right? I'm married, so I'm okay. But, but, but look at this. The first verses highlight these things that we should not partake in. Fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, foolishness, filthiness, and jesting or joking. What's wrong with jokes? Huh? Who remembers last week? What's wrong with jokes? It depends on what kind of jokes. Right? Like, like it depends on what you share on your Facebook page. Right? Like, if I want to share something bad, I just inbox him so nobody else can see it. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What's wrong with this? That ain't, that ain't good, Pastor. You influencing him privately. Huh? You're lukewarm and you don't know what, you know what you're joking about. Lukewarm. So, of course, Justin and crew joking are attempts to elicit laughs by crossing the line into improper. I did this last week. It stumbled me last week. I know what it means, though, right? Mm -hmm. The use of foul language, sexual innuendos, or rude or racist comments means that a so-called joke had to appeal <coughs> to baser instincts to earn laughs. Let, let, let me let's let's talk about this thing of baser 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 instincts, right? Animal, right? Mm -hmm. Sinful, right? Like 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 really think about this. Really think about this. We have our spirit, our soul, mm -hmm. 
but then all of us are saved, so we have an enhancement. When we do something wrong, don't we know it? Mm -hmm. like, 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 like God, the Holy Spirit, is, is telling us, yo, don't hit that button. You'd be like, but somebody else got to see it. <laughs> Someone else has to see it. I can't just, I, listen, I can't just enjoy this by myself. Ooh. Because isn't that what happens? You see something that you enjoy, but it goes so far against what God is. What do we do? What do you do? Post it anyway. I already said what I would I do, right? I I, I got like four people. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> she won. He's won. No, y'all don't get no, you laughing. You don't get no, no. All right. See, see, mo most pastors wouldn't expose themselves this way, right? But but I'm not I'm 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 a work in progress too, yeah. right? And so and so if this is the case, like like, are, do you have any restraint? Do you have any restraint? Is there any restraint in you, right? Is there any pullback? Because the Holy Spirit is doing it. Holy Spirit is telling you. He's tapping you. He's trying to expose you to you, right? Come on, Lee. Like temptation. Yeah, temptation's tough, right? Temptation is tough. And most temptations is because we've already tasted something. Right? The temptations, the temptations that we haven't experienced are tempting. Right? Because we haven't touched them yet. But the things that 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 listen, and this is not even a devil. This is not even a devil. Like this is us. Your algorithm is your mind. When it comes to social media, your algorithm is your mind. What you see from a daily base on a daily basis is because that's what you like. And the algorithm says, oh, you like that. And I know other people that like it. So let me join you with these other people. A couple weeks ago, I put on my face, I need a new algorithm. I do, right? Do I need a new algorithm or do I need a new mind? It's good, ain't it? Yeah, because sometimes I want to post something <laughs> and I get ready to do it. And it hits me and say, you know what I ain't ready to put up there? So, you so I just, I'm a little upset because I couldn't put it out, but I just hey, stopped it. How many times did I come back behind you and be like, there, why you do that? <laughs> huh? Or anyone else, right? But well, we learned. Mistakes, so we never figure it out in the first place. Oh, you figured it out. You figured it out. I know I won't. You figured it out. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has already let you know, right? We already know, we already know, we already know what's unclean and filthy and foolishness. We already know this. We don't have to learn that. We don't have to fail in that area because we already know. In Romans, it talks about it talks about the things that we accuse and excuse ourselves from, right? And it talks about this moral compass that we had. We know right and wrong from baby. Because check this out. When you tell the baby, don't get the cookie out the cookie jar, and the baby climbs up on the counter when no one's there, takes the cookie, crumbs all over his face, and then you come into the kitchen, and he goes like this. What are you eating? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. One years old, two years old. He already knows he's wrong, right? Six weeks down the line. When you don't even care that he eats the cookie because he already had his dinner, right? He climbs up on the counter, grabs another cookie, you come up into the room, and, and, and he immediately hides his hand. My granddaughter, right, she has this thing that she always thinks that she's going to get in trouble from something. The other day I heard her say, why are you always running when somebody's coming, <laughs> right? Because she has this thing where she feels like she's going to get in trouble. And so because she feels that way, she hides. Like we have a nature that identifies right and wrong. We don't need God for that. We don't need God for that. We already know. And so, and so failure in that area is not teaching us anything. Failure in that area is just reinforcing that we, that we need God. That's all that's doing, right? And so, and so if this is the case, like these basic instincts, Paul, Paul used, says these things are not convenient. Greek word means inappropriate, not suitable, and not right. We already know this. We already know it, but because of our appetites of sin, right? You're born into sin and shaped with iniquity. The appetite never stops. I don't care who you are. The appetite for sin is always there because sin brings pleasure even if it's just for a season. Sin bring, brings pleasure, human fleshly pleasure. 
And so, and so because of that, right, discipline comes, but the moment that you don't want to be disciplined anymore, this is where a real fight happens. The real fight happens because I want to taste what I want to taste, and I want to taste it right now. Right? This is what I want. Right? And who do we hide from? Each other, not God. And we know we're not hiding from God. As long as the church doesn't see it, as long as anyone else doesn't see it that I need to influence, I'm good. Right? As long as pastor doesn't see it. Listen, I'm going to block pastor from this post because I really need to share it. <laughs> I used to do that. that ain't oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that anymore, though. Whack them all. <laughs> For this you know. Woo! This you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an adulterer have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Mm -hmm. mm. That's tough, isn't it? Right? Because check this out, we're guilty of that. We're guilty. Uh, let, me, let me explain something to you. As pastor, if someone visits this church and really likes it, but they go to another church, and I want them to be a part of me, and I don't let the Holy Spirit lead them, and I try to coerce them. What am I doing? I'm coveting somebody else's member. Right? Like, 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 like let's just be honest. Like, we, we got to let God be God. Right? He, he says that they don't have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Right? The person that is coveted is. Right? So, 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 but don't we all covet? Like, what's your favorite car? When you see that thing, you're like, dang, I really like that. Right? Or when you when 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 we see somebody like we haven't been on vacation in a while, we be seeing y'all posting, y'all be on sand and 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 right. having a good time, and and you know for a while she'd be like, I'm like babe, why are you always hating? <laughs> then I found myself going, <sighs> right? Hate is desire. Right. <laughs> but 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 at the same time, at the same time, right? The, the disgust is because you saw someone else doing it. It's not necessarily that the disgust came to the top because you just want you sitting in the kitchen and you want to go to the beach. It's when you saw someone else doing it. You, you feel me? Like, like, like these are the things, this, this is why awareness, this is why spiritual awareness is so important. Because without spiritual awareness, you'll find yourself dabbling and dipping into things just because this is your emotion. This is just your emotion. And I'm not telling you to be perfect. I'm just telling you to be aware. Right? I'm telling you, because, because check this out. Because check this out. On things that are not dealt with in your soul begin to lead you in places and things and doing certain things unaware because you don't self-reflect. You don't have the awareness of where you're mentally and spiritually at. And so now you're being led by your soul instead of being led by the Spirit of God. Yes. You, you see what I mean? And your soul is corrupt. Yes. All of our souls are corrupt. Yes. And so because our soul is corrupt, this is why we need Holy Spirit more than ever. We need Holy Spirit because, because my mind has is corrupt. My mind has experienced things. My mind has conjured up things, my mind has mapped out and, and, and put things in motion, right, so that I can follow through with my heart. You see what I'm saying? And so, so it's like, so it's like, I have, even though I'm not uh, uh, coveting, like, as a lifestyle, like, I'm not manipulating people because I want your stuff, right? Even though I'm not an adulterer, uh, uh, idolater, right, where I worship other things, but that thing that you desire so strongly could be a part of worship because you might do anything to get it or to keep it. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Right? And so, and so, but, 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 like, that's not, that's not what we desire. We should never desire the wrath of God coming on anyone. Right? And so, and so our job as Christians is to minister so we can keep people from the wrath of God. Right? We don't celebrate the wrath of God coming on someone because that's utter destruction. Mm -hmm. That's utter destruction. And, and, and that's, not my, that's not my outlook on life. 
My, my outlook on life is, how can I help you and save you from destruction? Right? And so, and so let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come with the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Like, like if I minister to say, oh, you're going to hell and I'm going to enjoy it, that is so wrong. You, you, you see what I mean? That's wrong. And so, and so knowing that there's children of obedience and there's children of disobedience, where do I want to dwell? Is where, I, where I'm getting at. Right? Because if I call myself Christian, but and I believe in Jesus Christ, but I always find myself in disobedience, that must mean that I'm out of order. I'm completely out of order. And the last week, what I shared was, if this was a vending machine, and you walked up to it and put your money in it, right, without, a, without an out of order sign, and your money got stuck. Takesha said, well, I would rock it. Well, what if it wasn't, the thing didn't spin to where it rocked? It just broke. It just, it just didn't do anything. It just ate your money. Would you come back to it? No. Huh? Would you come back to it? Would you dig it? Well, maybe, ain't this what we do? Maybe it'll give me two. <laughs> come on, y'all. Huh? Yeah, I did that. He did that. So did I. Maybe I'll get two Reese Cups. Right? Now I got four. And I'm going to really rock it then. Then you're going to really rock it. You're going to really rock it, right? Yeah. But, 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 oh, this is good. This is good. But, but what if you don't get out of it? You're going to break it. That's the way I ain't breaking a window. That's all right. You ain't got to give me church answer because you're here. No. <laughs> but but we're going to rock it, right? We're going to abuse it yeah. because it took something valuable from us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But we would never do that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We put all kinds of valuable stock in ourselves, and, we, and sometimes we're out of order, right? <laughs> we, 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 we conjure up in our mind that, that, that I'm valuable even though I'm out of order when it comes to God. Like, 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 like let's deal with this today. Let's just deal with this today, right? What is out of order in my life? Because just because you're a believer and just because you're saved doesn't mean that there's another step to take. Mm -hmm. There's not another level to achieve. Just because you're saved and God has blessed your life doesn't mean that everything is perfect. And achievement comes with, with, with understanding where God wants you to go. Because the moment that we get lax, that appetite, the moment that you get lapsed when it comes to God, right? I got it. I'm good. Mm -hmm. This I don't do this anymore. I don't do this anymore. I don't do this anymore. I do this. I do this. I do this. I do this. It sounds like that man that was in the temple and said, God, at least I'm not like one of these sinners where I beat my, he's beating his chest saying, I'm not like him because I do this, this, and this. But there's something, there's something hidden. There's something that should be bring you to your knees. And saying, Lord, forgive me for this too. Mm -hmm. Right? But we, we don't get to that place. Because we like to highlight what is in order and not highlight what's out of order. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. All right, so this inheritance, any piece of property that passes by law, any piece of property that passes by law to an heir on the death of the owner, who died for us to get this inheritance? Christ. Christ. Right? And so, so check this out. Sometimes regarding God's promise to his people, like the land of Israel or a heavenly kingdom. Like, 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 like check this out. These things are, 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 are ours, right? And we take it for granted. Do you really take for granted that God chose you, allowed Christ to save you by faith through grace? Like, like, like think about this. Think about this. In my everyday life, I'm saved, and I know I'm saved, but I do this because I like it, therefore I take this death, burial, and resurrection for granted. Is there any fight back? Mm. Because I'm not telling you, listen, if you can stop today, great. If you can't stop today, then you got to apply faith so you can stop. Because at the moment that there's effort, you're going to fail. The first step comes with faith, always with faith, Right? And so, and so, can I believe God enough to fill this void that I keep filling in my life? Does this make sense? Yeah. The reason why I do it is because I think that my life will be less without it. All that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The pride of life, listen, listen, 
You can look at a thing and turn your head, right? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. You can say, okay, I'm not going to deal with that anymore. But the pride of life is so sneaky. The pride of life is so sneaky because the pride of life tells you that your life will be better if you have this thing. Right? And so because your life will be better because you have this thing, you say, God, this must be you because if this, if this thing makes my life better, then I got to have it. Right? Man, woman, place, people, place, thing. Right? People, place, thing. This makes my life better. And so because it makes my life better, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to engage with it. And God said, listen, I'm the one who makes your life better. I've made your life better. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so because I've made your life better, you're choosing something idolatry. You're choosing something over me. Whew. Whew. This is good. It's quiet in here again this week. It's quiet, right? Listen, we take hold of these things by saving faith. Saving faith. We maintain the inheritance through living and working faith. Right? Listen, listen. They tell you faith without works means that your faith is dead, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so are you working to stay saved? No. Huh? No. So why do you work? Okay, him. But why? why? Why Why? are you working? Why do you do the things that require work when it comes to your faith? Because I believe God. Because you believe God. I love God. Love I love everything about God. I love his kingdom. Right? See, see, when it comes, listen, listen. Have you ever, have you ever did a thing and be like, oh my God. Work. Right? Monday comes, right? You had the best weekend. You had a long weekend too. Work stopped on Thursday. Right? <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Monday was a holiday, right? Tuesday comes. You're like, oh my God. I didn't want this weekend to ever end. Right? You get to a place of dread because you've been enjoying yourself so much. But what happens if you don't show up on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Where's the reward? There's no check. Right? There's no check. So you got to you gotta do what? You got to get up. You got to bite the bullet. You got to dig your, knee, your toes in the sand, your heels in the sand, and push off, launch, and go to work. Right? Why? Why? You won't get rewarded, right? There's no check with it. What happens when we don't do these things by faith with God? Salvation is a reward, right? We take hold of these things by saving faith. We maintain it by living faith, right? Do we have to maintain the inheritance? I don't want to confuse you. This is good, ain't it, Helima? This is good. Do we maintain the inheritance? We maintain the benefits. We, we operate in the benefits by living faith. We operate in the... Because check this out. God doesn't do anything that, that he, he doesn't give and take back. Right? That's not what he does. But what happens is that we can become so disorderly that we don't maximize what God has done in our lives. And so we find ourselves maximizing situations that have nothing to do with God when we should be over here maximizing the thing that God brings to our lives. I like to use the word manipulate, right? That we manipulate the blessing, right? How do we manipulate the blessing? Who, 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 can, who can finish my, my, okay, okay, the screw, right? If, if there's something that I need to take out of the wall with a screw, should I use a hammer? What do I need to do with the screw? I need the right tool to manipulate it to get it out. What is the right tool when it comes to God? <laughs> ah, who said that? Faith. I give you a blue star. Gold star. You get a gold star. <laughs> All things are done by faith with God. It's not by faith then. If it's not by faith, then it's by effort. Right? Like, I got to do this for God. I got to do this for God. I'm believing God. It's so, it's so different. It's so different. Right? We, we get burned out because we keep trying instead of doing it. Like, 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 when the Bible tells you, the first time I read, you are the righteousness of God by faith, I didn't feel righteous. I didn't feel righteous at all. Right? When the Bible tells me, be ye holy, for he is holy, I didn't feel holy. 
But when, when God uses words like be and you are, mm -hmm. like, like, like be means that come into, come into this understanding. Be holy, right? L listen to me. When Christ died and you accepted him, everything came. Just because you're not operating by it doesn't mean that it's not in you. Just because, just because the vending machine is broke doesn't mean that, the, that the, the goods are not in the machine. The vending machine is broke and it can't dispense the things that it needs to dispense into the earth because it's out of order. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times, a lot of times we're out of order. It doesn't mean that his blessing, his righteousness, his grace, his love, his joy, his holiness is not in us. He forged all these things in Christ <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is in us. It's the reason why we don't see it is because what? We're out of order. It's there. And so what happens, we try to achieve it instead of receiving it. You see what I mean? Because when you receive the fact that you're righteous, all of a sudden it changes something in your psyche, right? I'm the righteousness of God by faith. So when sin comes to dictate because of a taste that you had, right? You can tell sin like, oh, no, that's not who I am anymore. I'm the righteousness of God by faith. You, does this make sense? See, see when, 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 when I got this understanding, it freed me up from effort and place me in faith. That's it. I don't have to try to be holy. I don't have to try to be righteous. I have an understanding of who I am. And so because I have this understanding, I, I stopped trying to be it. I stopped trying to present myself to the church in a particular way. I stopped trying to talk in a particular way. God knew who he called. I am who I am. Right? And so because I am who I am, I choose to be who he is. Does this make sense? Right? Listen, listen, I choose, excuse me, I choose to be what he said I am. The righteousness of God. Blessed. Holy. Is every action holy? No. Whew. Does that mean I'm not? No. Ah, come on, Lee. So basically he's directing your path. Yes, again, yes. He is directing my path always. But you know, when, when like, like, um, when, when you ask God for something and he give it to you, and, and you, you, you like walking on faith, you feel it, and they give it to you. I mean, to me, it makes more, it makes me go ahead and more, 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 and trust him in the Lord more. That's how I got where I'm mean, I'm just sitting on myself. How I got what I believe in God, and what I got, when he, I ask for something, he give it to me. That made me want more to keep believing in God to further where I'm at today. That's good, Lee. That's good. Let, let, let me ask you a question. Who feels righteous in here? Feels. Who feels it? I'm the only one with my hand up? Okay, okay, so say this. Say this. I am the righteousness of God by faith. Come on, say it again. I am the righteousness of God by faith. I am the righteousness of God by, by faith. Listen, when you go to that mirror in the morning, you're, what, what, what is not like God is speaking to you. What is not like God is speaking to you, and you keep agreeing with what's in the mirror instead of agree agreeing with the truth of the word. This is our mirror. What's in the mirror is not the mirror. This is our mirror. Christ is our mirror. We, are, we, we operate in his image. We are the righteousness of God by faith. Stop looking in the mirror and allowing the mirror to dictate who you are because your conscience is agreeing with the mirror. Your conscience has to agree with God. So the next time you go to the mirror, you got to tell the mirror, I'm the righteousness of God, not what you say I am. Amen. Amen. I'm the righteousness of God, not what you say I am. Amen. Because when you do this, listen, you got to talk it. You got to change your heart. You got to change your mind. You got to repent. See, repentance comes with understanding too. Right? Repentance comes with understanding. Like it's not just not touching the thing because if you if you if you don't touch a thing for a season doesn't mean that you won't go back to it yeah. because your lust will drive you to that thing. Mm -hmm. But when you start telling yourself, I'm the righteousness of God. I remember going when I first got saved, going to the mirror and and and, and coke and weed mm -hmm. and drinking and that life was all over me. And looking at myself saying, Boy, you look bad. You look bad. Right? Then I started going to church. Then I started to learn. Then I put on a suit. Then I kept learning. 
And I kept doing this thing. And I kept praying. And I started worshiping God. I started believing what the word said about me. Then I went back to the mirror one day and I said, boy, you look good. It wasn't the physical thing, even though it had changed. My eyes wasn't bloody. The bags were gone. The bags might be there now, but the bags were gone. It wasn't that. It was the fact that, that my countenance was showing clean. Amen. My countenance was showing the righteousness of God. Yes. Jesus. The effects of walking with Christ. Yes. You, you, you see what I mean? The effect of walking with Christ. You, 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 you have to allow him to lead you. Because if you do not allow him to lead you, and you keep leading yourself, you will keep bumping your head against the wall. And by bumping your head against the wall, you're going to be wondering why God hasn't done it. He did it. And because he's, he's already did the thing for you, you just got to receive it. This is a faith walk. This is not an effort walk. It's a faith walk. I believe God. Say it. I believe God. I am the righteousness of God by faith. Come on, give God praise right there. Put a stamp on it. Put a stamp on it. So by faith we are rewarded with what? Power. Listen, listen. Isn't that what we want? Power to do what? Overcome me. <coughs> Overcome the disorder. Right? Endurance, right? The ability to get through certain things in life, right? Faith, listen, listen. Because let me tell you something. When you set out on faith, everything that is not like God is coming for you. Everything that is in you and everything that is not in you is coming for you. It's coming to suppress you, right? This world is designed to suppress you, right? And so, and so you got to have the endurance, right? And so listen, your effort is not your endurance, it's your faith. Right? Because I want you to go home and cry. I want you to be frustrated. I want you to get up the next day and go back, though. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Because endurance tells me that I'm going to get up. Mm -hmm. Right? Listen, listen. I spent three years in a very bad place mentally. Right? The last three years before I came home. Even the last year before I got up. I just came out January 2024. I've been ministering to y'all from a dep depressed place. Right? But because I had faith, I had the endurance to deal with this place that I was in because I knew, I knew the moment that I choose to walk out that cave, I'm going to walk right back into his light, right? Like, like, like I chose to go dark, right? Because of issues of life. I chose dark instead of light. But, but, but listen, endurance, because faith kept telling me, yo, why are you doing this to yourself? I'm talking to you every day, wasn't I? Every single day, me and him on the phone three, four, five times a day, right? And we both bouncing off dark places off each other. Cuz, man, cuz, uh, cuz. Right? But, 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 but I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. That thing can't hold me. That thing can't hold me at all. I don't even belong in there. See, see, because listen, no one put me in there. No circumstance put me in there. No issue of life put me in there. I put myself in there. Because check this out. The issues of life, the person that, that, that I mourned, all the things that drove me to the cave is because I chose to go there. That wasn't the will of God for my life. The will of God for my life was says, mourn for a season, not three years. Mourn for a season. Get over yourself. We got work to do, kid. You see what I'm saying? Look, listen, holiness. Holiness. Like, like in those dark places... You just start grabbing for everything. When you're not eating from God's plate, you'll eat bugs in that cave. Yeah. In those dark places, you'll take anything that nourishes you. You'll reach for anything that will nourish you in those dark places. Right? Grubs and bugs. Is that the will of God? No. He says, I prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. Who's the enemy but Satan? Sometimes the enemy is ourselves. Right? Any of these things that come by effort will eventually fade. You can't operate in power, endurance, righteousness, and holiness on your own. You need God. We need God. Human nature doesn't have the capability of fulfilling these things, but the Holy Spirit working in us will enable us to walk with power and authority in God's word. Power and authority in God's word. Power and authority over what? The works of the enemy, right? Sometimes the works of you. The works of you. Holy Spirit, consistently, constantly, 
without, without, without rest. Stop, 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 stop. Without rest, the Holy Spirit, stop. Without rest, don't. Without rest, come on. Sometimes he deals with us very, very like a baby. Hey, 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 no, no, no. Other of us he deals with very sternly. Didn't I tell you no? Amen. You know what happens when you stop hearing him? You became numb. You're wide open. You're wide open to that desire. You're wide open to that people, place, and thing. You're wide open and you can't hear him. Doesn't mean that he stopped speaking. He's still talking, but he's wrestling with you to get to a place. He's dealing with you, playing chess with your life to get you to a particular place so you can hear him again. Mm -hmm. Because it's not that he's not talking. God is for a speaking spirit. When he made us, he said, man has become a, another speaking spirit. Right. Another speaking spirit. We, we, he's always talking. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's constantly giving us truth. Can you hear him? Can you identify him? Do you, are you so far gone that you don't have the discernment to see him, feel him, and understand what he's trying to do in your life? Amen. I'll never want to be there. So don't partake. Fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, idolatry, right? Don't partake. Why? Don't even hang around them. That's what the message Bible says. Don't even hang around those people. Huh? When you, when you get yourself together, right? When, you, when you're trying to get yourself together, have, have you ever tried to get yourself together and, and I'm, I'm going to stop drinking? You get strong, right? You get strong and, and somebody calls, hey girl, you want to go to a uh, uh, brunch? Right? Mimosas. Yes, yes. Sangria. Is that what it's called? <laughs> you sit down. You want to drink? No. Lord doesn't want me spending my money on that. I'll buy you one. <laughs> I'll buy you one. Don't worry about it. I got it. Well, since the Lord don't want me to spend my money on it. No, no, no. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. You win that day. Again. 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 Oh. I got I got Bring her one. <clears throat> Next thing you know, you're tipping off, making your own. <laughs> right? This is what we do. You, you know, when, 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 when I first got saved, I like to use this, because she always says, I, I, I was saved. saved. She's been saved. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. We live in Winchester. She comes through with wine coolers. You know how the wine cooler is four pack, right? This is 1995, something like that, six. No, this is 2004. Oh, 2004. Yeah. <laughs> we met in. Yeah, right. 2004. 2002. She's coming through the kitchen with a wine cooler, and I go to reach to grab one, and I heard distinctly, "Uh, uh, they're for her. Why for her and not me?" I didn't ask you. No. <laughs> I shouldn't have been hanging around you is the problem. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> you can't answer all the questions. You've been with me 31 years. You're just sitting over here spitting out all the answers. You're supposed to be teaching them, if that's the case. How many of y'all agree that she should be oh, teaching? Yeah. 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 Okay. Amen. You got all the answers, Amen. you should teach them. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come with the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be, be not partakers with them, for you were sometimes darkness. Now, who saved? Everyone saved. You were sometimes darkness. You were sometimes dark. You used to be dark. Look, look how God considers you. Do you consider yourself light? Yes. Woo! Yes. Say that again, Clay. Light in dark places. Light in dark places. Okay, I can, I can deal with that. But now are you light in the Lord? Check this out. Semicolon. Walk as children of light. 
walk as children of light. See, 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 listen. It's one thing to know it. It's one thing to know that you've transitioned. It's another thing to live it. Amen. That, that word walk means to, to, to habitat here. Make your home in this light. Right? Say that again. Be the influence. Be the influence. I think you need to preach that. You've been saying that for like two weeks now. Be the influence. Yeah, you're just trying to tell me. <laughs> She's just trying to tell me again. I'm just talking to you, babe. That's all right, Mother's Day's coming. <laughs> Where are you going? Watch brunch. Okay. Let's see what I got. What I got to deal with. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. What is the fruit of the spirit? Come on, give me a couple. Give me a couple. Love, joy, Love, joy peace. Right. Joy. This, 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 this is walking in life. This is walking in light. What are they? Love. Love. Long suffering. Forbearance. Same. Right? Forbearance means to hold off wrath. Right? Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. These things, listen, listen. If you just operate by love, if you just operate by peace, if you just operate by joy, right? When that person cusses you out, you just got to operate by love. <laughs> check this out, check this out, check this out. Remember the dude I told you I got in an argument with? Right? I told you this two weeks ago, or was it a week ago? It was one of them. Last week. I got to argue with him. I went back to him twice. I went back to him Saturday, right after we got in an argument, and I said, the mark of friendship is how you bounce back from a disagreement. He shook my hand. Right? I said, give me a hug, yo. He gave me a hug. Sunday when I left here, I went straight to work. Pulled right beside his car. I said, yo, man, I'm sorry, man. I apologize. I apologize again. I'm sorry, yo. Like, don't be mad at me, man. I don't want you to be mad at me, man. The mark of friendship is how you bounce back from disagreements. I ain't mad at you, bro. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> Pulled off. Just left me sitting there. He didn't speak to me till yesterday. And he had to. We were passing each other like this. He's on his phone. He looked up. I'm, 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 I'm right here. What's up? I said, what's up? That was it. I'm not begging him. I did my part. I operated from love. I operated from peace. I welcome his friendship. Because I'm not mad at him. Right? But is it my job to beg him? Ooh, how about long suffering? How about long suffering? Ooh, how about long suffering? How about meekness? I did, I did my meekness part. I did that. How about long suffering? See, because let me tell you something. I'm not going to beg him. But long suffering tells me, check this out. Long suffering tells me that when he comes around, I got to be available. Right? This is what long suffering tells me. That when he comes around, I have to be available. Because everything in me, I've been practicing. When he says, I, I've been practicing. When he said, what's up? Like when, when he comes to me and says, yo, what's up, blah, blah. Oh, oh, you know, oh, now okay. you want to say this what? I'm getting this out now. I'm practicing, I'm practicing the wrong part now so that when he comes, I can do the long-suffering part. Praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> but y'all feel me? sometimes struggle with long suffering with other people but there's always a time where you want somebody to operate in long suffering with you right yeah definitely right right so it has to go both ways <laughs> Paul's discussion of vices and virtues in the previous verses have centered on the lifestyle God expects of his new new community like God is dealing with this is what he expects out of us Right? He's, he expects this out of us. If believers are indeed the children of God, if we call ourselves the children of God, if I'm indeed God's child, right, and part of his family, we must manifest the fruit of the Spirit. We must. The word, the word used here is must. Must. If I'm God's child, if I'm part of this community, if I'm repping God, right, I got to rep God when it's hard for me. I have to rep God when it's hard for me, right? When, I, when, when, when just because he's not loving and peaceful to me doesn't mean I don't rep God in everything. 
right? And so, and so check this out. My pride, my attitude is practicing what Jamal wants to do. How Jamal wants to handle this thing. Oh, you, you, oh, oh, now. Because you know why? Because you know why? Me apologizing to him and not accepting it has made me prideful. Come on, let's deal with it. Yeah. Right? It's caused pride to swell up in me. Yeah. But how do you win a friend? What does the Bible say? You win a friend by showing yourself friendly. I did it, me. Right? See, 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 just because we execute. Okay, check this out. When God tells a thing, it, it's not conditional. It's not conditional. He uses what's called ORIS verbs. A-O-R-I-S-T. It means continual. To continue in a thing. Right? So when he says be something, do something, he's telling you this is forever, not in this condition. This is forever. And so, and so, and so when the condition's not right, we don't operate by agape. If the brotherly love is not there, then the brotherly love ain't there. Ain't this what we do? If it's not there, then it's not there. Right? Well, well, how do you, pastor, how do you deal with people that are abusive to you? Or get smart with you? Or treat you some way? I can love you from a distance. Woo! Ain't this what we do? Ain't, ain't, isn't this what we do? Right? You can be over there. Always be ready for reconciliation. But we always walk in love, right? Yeah, always walk in love. Does that mean that we have to be in each other's face? No. no. But when he comes around, and if he wants to be the same way we were before, I must get over myself. Because just because he denied my apology once, twice, and just because I haven't given it a third time, doesn't mean that God's not dealing with him. Because check this out. As much as we interact and talk, he's missing me too. Trust me. We talk too much. Yeah, it's relationship. Yeah, we talk too much. He's missing. Matter of fact, I'm going to punch him in the eye with that today. You don't miss me yet, y'all? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Real slick, too. Hey, yo, you don't miss me yet? Love. It's tough. It's tight, Same but it's right. Same with siblings. Come on, huh? Same thing happens with siblings. That's right. It happens with everybody, right? So, fruit of spirit, love that we already did this. We already did this. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We got a few more. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. So he told us what we should do, right? Now, now, what is unfruitful works of darkness? We already, I already told you. Fornication, uncleanliness, covetousness, adultery, right? Fornication. <coughs> Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Like for real? Foolishness. Foolishness. That, that's right. I forgot about that one. The, the joking, right? That's foolishness, right? <laughs> Filthiness, right? For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Like it's a shame to even talk. I can't send you no more messages, B. Put it like talking about someone's back. Talking about backbiting, right? Backbiting, backbiting. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever those make manifest is light. Reproved mean to be exposed. Whatever is exposed in you. When you go to that mirror and, and God says, yo, that was wrong. Mm -hmm. That was exposed to you, right? Now, this is supposed to make light. It's not supposed to have corresponding action that is repeated over and over and over again. You got to come out of the dark and into the light. He's telling us don't have fellowship with the works of darkness. Not the people of darkness, the works of darkness. He didn't tell us not to minister to people that are in darkness. He said don't operate in those works. Right? So, so if this is the case, the first, the, the first thing that has to be done is I have to deal with the things that are being exposed in me. I know God, I know God, I know God, I know God, I know God. When do we stop saying I know? When you know you're not going to quit. <coughs> and when you, stop saying I, when you stop saying I know, that means you stop working on it. You stop believing God in that area and you just went on with what you're going to do. 
straight disobedience. Mm -hmm. And it's not honorable. It is not honorable. And God's big enough to deal with your dishonor. That's the great part, that he doesn't change because you're dishonorable. But don't think that you're, not, you're operating orderly because you go to church and you read your Bible and you pray. Because there's an area. Listen, the chips work. The, uh, uh, the peanut butter crackers work. The Reese cups don't work. And that's the thing you like the most, but the Reese cups are not working, right? And so you got to settle for peanut butter crackers. They all dry and they get in the orange, right? And they, they, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. They got this peanut butter uh, ruby like instead of peanut butter I like in them, right? And it's just not the that's just not right. But 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 what God is saying is that I'm going to send the maintenance man. The, ma the maintenance man is coming so you can get Reese cups again. Holy Spirit's coming to do some maintenance. He's coming to do some maintenance on you. And, and, and listen, and listen, don't break the machine again. Don't break the machine again. Let the chips break. Let the peanut butter crackers break. Let, let's, let's deal with the Reese cups. Let, let, let's deal with this. Because if you don't deal with this, man, listen, it, it, stuff is just going to keep being out of, out of order. Like we all have a battle, consistently. And what are we gonna do about it? Just fold up? We just gonna fold up and take what this world gives us? Come on now. You just gonna, we, like, 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 like at least fight back. At least try. At least, at least, and today I'm gonna believe God. Like at least today I'm gonna believe God. Because without today, You'll find yourself six years from now saying, man, how did I get so far away from God? Because when a house is swept clean, right? Remember the days when it was good. Remember the days when you were strong in God. Remember the days when you was giving God praise and you was honoring God and you was eager to get to the body of Christ. You was eager to get to the ministry. Remember those days. And then all of a sudden you just didn't deal with those disorderly things. You just didn't grow past that one thing. And the house is swept clean, and the evil spirits are roaming the land. They're looking for another home, mm -hmm. but those evil spirits are common to you. Yes. So he says, hey, 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 you know what? I know this guy. I can't get back in there anymore. I can't get back to him anymore. So you're more evil than I am. Mm. It says, the Bible says this, that seven more evil spirits come and enter into the house that is swept clean and the condition of the man is worse than it was before. You find yourself being in worse position because you've allowed entry because you just won't deal with the issue. And man, you just got to choose God today. Today. Man, I, I, I got to finish this, man. I don't want to come back next week. <laughs> Awake you that sleep and arise from the dead, Christ shall give you light. Like, come on, man, get up. Come on. Th those of you who may be new or just visiting, God has you here for a reason today. God has you here for a reason today, right? Because church can look pretty, but walking with God is destructive. Mm. It's coming to destroy you yeah. and make you like Christ, mm -hmm. right? The imagery would then describe unbelievers asleep in the darkness of sin. The light of gospel truth shines on them, and they are called to wake up from their spiritually dead state and rise from the dead through conversion, right? The Ephesians were once darkness, but now are the light of the Lord. This would make Paul's words a call for those who have not responded to turn to the Lord while there is still time. That's not none of us. All of us have turned to God. We believe in Jesus. But the steps towards him are different. <laughs> Thank God for his mercy. Amen. Thank God for his grace. Amen. Right? You, 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 you have to really understand that, that we don't deserve to be children of God. Not one of us. And he's allowed us, with our disobedience, with our disorder, to stand in his grace. Man, think about how much mercy that is. Listen, listen. 
I forgave somebody, right? Because check this out. I apologized and we both were wrong. I assumed and let him think that he was right and I'm wrong by apologizing, right? <coughs> so in his mind, he thinks he's right. But we were both wrong. But check this out. What am I practicing? The fact that he's wrong. You see what I mean? We're wrong standing in the presence of God, and God's not practicing that we're wrong. He's practicing as he that as if we're right as because we look like Christ to him by faith. Amen. This is tough. Because we don't reciprocate back into the world what he's done for us. And it's important that we walk the way we're supposed to walk because he has called us to walk just like Jesus. And it's so tough, man. It's so tough. It's so tough to be human. <laughs> like we're human. <coughs> we are human. And because we're human, we're flawed. We fail. When do you get up and try? When do you at least just try? Right? Come on, come on, I gotta go. So, how would you define this? This is good. We about to, we about to close. How would you define this? <clears throat> Fools versus wisdom. Foolishness versus wisdom. What's a fool? Someone that doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut. Someone that doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut. Well, that's what I'm talking. Someone that doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut. Come on, Alima. That's the whole thing. For me, um, a wise person learns from the mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. A fool continues in the same mistakes. Okay, I like that answer. Anybody else? Come on, Clay. One listen and one who doesn't listen. One who listens and one who doesn't listen. Obedience and disobedience. Obedience and disobedience. Doesn't know the knowledge huh? of God. Doesn't know the knowledge of God. Wouldn't they be ignorant? Well, yeah, they'd be ignorant. Okay. So, what is wisdom? What have I taught you that wisdom is? The proper use of knowledge. The proper use of knowledge. So, to know a thing, so to know a thing and not operate in that thing, Makes you a what? Foolish. Okay. All right. So, is it is it really disobedience and obedience? Is it really keeping your mouth shut? It's none of those things because you can be ignorant and not know. Right. But the moment that you know and don't operate in, I didn't call you a fool. You operated as one. We, excuse me, we operated as one. Right? Because I'm guilty too. Trust me. This is the verse that basically isn't the one hitting the child, but the one that doesn't say anything when they wow the child to how being hit. They say they're just as bad as the person that hit the child. That's the very same analogy. Oh no. That's a, that's the so so check this out. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. wise right. See that you walked mindful, right? L -l Listen. See that you walk. So watch your step, use your head. I don't like this. This is what the Message Bible says. I don't like this one. Watch your step, use your head. Your head got you in trouble. Your head's got you in trouble. This, that, this doesn't have enough detail, right? But, but, but check this out. This is what Amplified says. Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposely. Walk this walk with God on purpose. Put on, right? This is what he says. Be clothed. Put on the new man, right? That means that when I go to my closet, my spiritual closet in the morning, right? When I approach this dude today, right? I got to approach him right. No, 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 no. This is true because I, I had no intentions, but I, I feel like this is the will of God for me, right? Come back again. Be meek. Get out your pride, Jamal, and be meek, right? So I'm going to be slick about it. You don't miss me, yo? Right? I got to be slick about it. I got I to gotta find some way I can be prideful, right? Isn't that what we do? I'm going to honor God, but I'm still going to be prideful. Or how can I just say, yo, can we be friends again? I, I, I just, that, I, I can't do it. I, I, I can't do it. I'm going to fail if I do it that way. Because you know why? I feel weak. Can I be transparent? Right? Can I be transparent? Yeah, yeah. Right? Listen, live purposely and worthily and accurately. Right? Worthily and accurately. Like, like, be mindful. Walk circumspectly means I have to have purpose, I have to do it with worth, and I have to be accurate with it. Oh, God, come on, man. He's dealing with me right now, Lima, right? Not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, right? Not just use your head, 
apply the knowledge. Apply the know-how. I've told you how to do this thing. And so because I've told you how to do this thing, do it the way I, <laughs> the way I told you to do it. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Redeeming the time is mean, meaning this. Do you understand what 2024 is, y'all? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I want to give you one more. And be not drunk with wine wearing is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in the heart of the Lord, giving thanks always for things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Listen to this. He said, redeeming the time. Some of us are operating very unaware. You think you're coming back to church or you attending church or you being here today is about your walk. God is calling his people back to ministry. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's about to get real bad. It's about to get real bad. And if you cannot see the signs of the times because you are unaware, you are about to be caught in a place that you don't want to be caught in. Listen, the Bible talks about the mark of the beast. Elon Musk put a chip in somebody's head last week. FDA approved it last year or, or in May 2023. Last year. He did it last week. The Bible said that they won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Right? Donald Trump's going to be our president. Mark my word. And he's not going to want to leave in four years. That's going to be civil unrest. You think January 6th was something. Like, 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 listen, go stock your house up, right? This morning, I listened to, this morning, I listened to a thing where the power grids won't be able to handle what AI is doing, and there won't be no power. A week ago, I heard Donald Trump on a, on a, on a commercial on my YouTube channel say that the next attack on America will be on the power grids and it will put America into submission for a year and if you don't prepare now, you won't be able to eat. I also heard this week where a man cut his father's head off, put it on a 14 minute YouTube video and said there will be revolutionary war, a bloody revolutionary war that's coming to America. And you think that this walk is about you? Listen, listen to me. You have to survive. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yeah. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but yeah. understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yeah. The will of the Lord is that we walk with him through turbulence. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, and listen, and listen, if you think that your salvation will give you the faith to endure, you won't. you got to build your faith now while it's day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While it's day. You think that I'm, 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 I don't ever preach like this. In 12 or 13 years, I have never been the conspiracy theorist. I have only taught the word of God. I have never did this, what I'm doing right now. But what I'm telling you, three weeks ago, I just kept hearing God. You got a year to prepare. It's about to get dark. Go back on my timeline on my Facebook page if you're my friend. Go back there and look. About three weeks ago, I just kept, all day, I just kept saying, man, it's about to get evil. And then all these things, all these signs just showed up to me. Listen, you can take it with a grain of salt or you can prepare, right? But what I'm telling you, a gallon of water a week, right, is a dollar. It's 358 gallons of water, 352, whatever, right, at the end of the year. A can of food, like, 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 like I'm telling y'all, man. This world is evil, man. And when and when and and if and if it goes down and you're unprepared spiritually and physically, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I may be seeing it wrong, right? I don't never. I've never considered myself prophetic. That's not who I am. I'm just reading the ticker tape. That's all I'm doing. I watch. This world is at war. This world is at war. Like the world is at war. It's hot in the Middle East. Israel's at war. Like really think about what the Bible has said, y'all. 
And you think that you, you being here is about you? Someone has to survive for the body. Because if this is not the end, this is not Armageddon, if this is just another rumors and, 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 and birth pains, I want to survive this, this contraction. I, I, I want to survive this. I don't want it to break me to the point where I can't survive it. Listen, listen to me. If you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, you should be ministering this stuff to someone else. The world needs us. Amen. Stop being selfish. Get out of disorder. Get into order. Redeem the time. Because this is the worst the world has ever been in. This is the worst the world has ever been in today. And this technology that's out here, Bitcoin, AI, robots, like this stuff, like, 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 that's the word I was going to use, obsolete. It's cute. I use it. I play with it. I use it. But I'm telling you something. Redeeming the time. I, I, I didn't plan on doing this until this morning. When I went back over the scripture today, I, I, just, I just knew I was led to, to give you this. Because this is not my ministry. This is not what I do. I'm a teacher. But for me not to warn you, it's wrong. Right? And so, and so what I'm getting at is trust in the Lord with all your might. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Amen. 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 Come on, give God praise.